When I started working with juveniles in prison, I didn't necessarily want to document them in their environment. I actually wanted to extract them from their environment and just do portraits. And that seemed like a good way of approaching the subject, not as these people being like actors within a system of uh, imprisonment, but individuals who are, for whatever reasons, have their own unique experiences. And so I thought just straight on portraiture was a better way to portray that. I thought, why don't I just do something totally crazy that is really beyond what I know to do um, because it would be more interesting, more of a challenge. So I went in with an 8x10 camera. I really appreciated the fact that it slowed me way down. It made me very careful with the way I work. And there's also this sort of theater to it. Psychologically, when you're photographing someone with an 8x10 camera, they will infer that they must be a very important subject uh, if you're going to go through that kind of trouble. And so your dynamic with your subject changes with the sort of equipment that you're using. And that's sort of a showbiz level of it, but it, it does just sort of change the whole dynamic. So then I gave that up for a while and I thought I'll just do landscapes because uh, as actually someone else said this the other day, landscapes don't talk back. So um, I thought that would be great. I found landscapes to be actually harder than people. <laughs> I lived there as a teenager, and uh, my parents lived there both until they died. I, I had this kind of love-hate thing with the town. It was a small agricultural community. No teenager wants to be in a small agricultural community, um, so I really wanted out. When it turned to the point where I had no reason to ever go back to that town, you know, my dad was dead, everybody was gone, uh, I felt like it was unresolved to me somehow. So I started making trips back and just photographing like crazy morning, noon, and night. I wanted it to be somewhat personal that made sense to me, but I also wanted it to be somewhat symbolic of a whole lot of small communities that don't necessarily get any attention whatsoever. Uh, the thing that I tried to get across in the As American Falls series was not that it was special, but that it was perhaps special, but down the road there's another special town there all like that in some respects. Uh, and I don't know if I came up with it or somebody jokingly said, why not hippies? There's tons of hippies. And I wonder who these people, how do they see themselves? So I started asking some of my students, do you consider yourself a hippie? And several people said, well, yes, I do. I felt some allegiance to those sort of initial ideas of what it means to be a hippie or a free spirit or living off the land or that kind of thing. When I really get photography figured out so that I'm so good at it that uh, there's no mystery, then uh, that's when things get really boring and it's time to stop.